Hello, I'd like to take a few minutes and go through the advanced placement proctoring orientation, give you a high level overview um, of what it takes to successfully proctor an advanced placement test session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email Sarah Walner or myself, Tim Peterson. Um, at the end of the slides, our email address and phone numbers will be there available for you. I'm going to share my screen so that we have something to, uh, to follow. All right, so let's take a look at this proctoring overview. First of all, the purpose of this is to provide you with an opportunity to ensure that you have a successful experience as a proctor on an advanced placement exam. If you've proctored other exams before, this is the advanced placement test is very similar. If you have never proctored a test, please connect with us if you have any questions. Um, not difficult, but it is, there are some procedures that are important that we follow in order for student tests to actually be valid and to ensure that any score actually counts. So our agenda is we're gonna take a look at what happens the day of testing from student res uh, registration, kind of a quick overview, to what your role will be uh, uh, during the exam. Um, after the exam, what do you do? Then taking a look at any, some, some typical incident procedures, and finally schedules and general reminders. So let's get started. Morning of the examination or the afternoon of the examination, students will be reporting to the Alliant Energy Center by 7.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. if they are, have an afternoon exam. The location of the registration table and the exams is just outside of, of room D, as in dog. So it is to the far end, as you're facing the Alliant Energy Center, it is to the far left end of the, the complex. So parking is free. Uh, get there early, the students will get there early. Um, students are required to have a photo ID, um, and then they pick up their answer document, their um, AP documentation as well. And finally, they put aside any cell phones or smart watches or any electronics that they have um, prior to the exam. So all of that is, should be out of the way. There should be no questions about that during the exam. Uh, students will then be moving to the room, uh, the exam rooms by 745, in which they will begin, um, the proctors will begin uh, the, the sessions. In the afternoon, they'll be moving to the exam rooms by uh, 1145. The exams will start promptly at eight o'clock and it, at 12 noon. So if there are any questions about late arrivals, et cetera, as long as exam packages have not been opened, students may arrive and get settled in, take the exam. We typically have a couple kids who are late and we will be seeing that again, I'm sure this year. So during the exam, the proctor's role is there's many different things you do. First of all, you distribute the exam materials. If you are in the main room with other proctors, you will be simply helping. We have lead proctors who've been through this many times. So distributing materials. Um, if you were on your own, you would be reading the general exam instructions too, followed by the exam specific instructions. This is true if you are supporting in an accommodations section. Typically, in most large sections, you would not be doing um, this. Uh, Spanish language is another exam that you would be reading the general exam instructions to, followed by the exam-specific instructions. These are very simple, straightforward exam instructions. Please stick to the script, as it is vital that the exam move forward at a pace that is appropriate. We're not trying to rush, but by embellishing um, the script, it takes away time from the students. After the exam, uh, instructions are read, materials are, are all in place, the students have started testing. Please walk around the room um, on a regular basis. The, the purpose to, is to observe for uh, students to ensure that there is no cheating going on. Students should be seated in a specific uh, 
formation, so they should all be facing the same direction. Um, all the rooms will be set up correctly. So do not allow students to, to sit um, facing each other or facing sideways, et cetera. So students will be, um, you can seat them when they walk into the room, um, can direct them to specific seats, but please make sure that you are continuing to walk around the room during the exam. Most exams have a 10 minute break. Um, again, following the instructions, you will see that um, time is set aside for this. Uh, students can uh, leave the room um, or use the restroom at any time. Uh, break time is especially good because there's no clock ticking. If during the exam, the student needs to get up and use the restroom, they can. Um, the timing does not stop unless you have specific accommodations that say that the student can get up at any time. So in most cases, student can use the restroom, can use, uh, can walk around, um, take a break, but the clock will not stop. Please, um, we want to make sure that proctors are attentive to all the situations. So we're asking you also to refrain from using electronics, having conversations with other proctors, etc. So make sure that your electronics are uh, in a silent mode. Um, we don't want you to be using that. We know that it's very difficult. It is as well for the students. Um, it, the exam is a very stressful time for students, so any kind of, of uh, interruptions or anything like that can be very uh, distracting, very upsetting to students. So we want to make sure that it's the best possible situation for students to take exams. Follow the instructions. If you have any questions, um, there will be someone around comes around and, and checks on you if you are uh, proctoring the exam by yourself and just check to see whether you have any questions or if there are any issues. Once the exam is over, please collect and account for all material. Uh, that would be the test booklet, the instructions, things that students write in, things that students do not write in. Make sure that students have completed uh, their exam by placing the uh, appropriate identification marks on it. Collect and count materials before you allow students to leave. If there are exams that do not have the correct identification on it, they will not be scored. So we need, to, it's critical that we get uh, students to ensure that they have all the identified material, labels are, are present uh, prior to dismissal of students. If you have multiple students in the, in the room, make sure you count the number of ex exams and that it should equal the number of students. Once that is all taken care of, you can dismiss the students. Returning any material to Sarah Walner at the registration table um, prior to you finishing up. Okay, here's what everybody worries about and typically we do not have any issues with this. Students are paying for these exams, so it is, it's typically, they are very careful to not set themselves up for an incident which would cancel a score. However, please make sure that you understand the following. If there are electronics that the student pulls out during the exam or during a break, at any time, once you've started the exam, a student pulls out a cell phone, it looks like they're doing something with a smart watch other than looking at the time, um, that is grounds to confiscate the device and the student materials. The student will face dismissal from the exam. You will need to dismiss them and then you contact Sarah Wollner um, at the front desk when you are all finished with the exam. If there are other students in the exam, you need to focus on what's happening for them. Um, so do not leave the room at any time if there are students who are, are testing. Um, once completed, bring the material to Sarah. We'll take care of it. We'll talk with the student, make sure they understand what happened. We will file the report, incident reports. We need your information, so stick around afterwards for that. If there is an emergency during the test, first thing you do, we need to think about student safety, but we also need to think about exam security. Look at your watch, check the time if the fire alarm or any other incident happens, if there's a tornado, et cetera. 
um, please check the time when the alarm goes off and write that down quickly. Have students close their test booklets and leave them in place. Students should be moved to a safe area. You will be directed to, uh, students will be directed where to go if there's a fire, also if there's a tornado. They were, there will be directions given provided for you. If there's an all clear, for instance, there's a false alarm, um, we can go back to testing. So bring the students back to the room, check them in again, make sure they're all seated at, seated at the right um, test booklet. You can then, once they are calm and refocused, you can restart the test with the amount of time that remains. So you don't give them extra time, you don't shorten the time, you noted the time, you subtract that from when they started and from uh, the amount of time that they've used from the amount of time that's total on that exam, and then you continue with that exam. If there is an injury, a uh, student for some, uh, we've had a case of a, of a nosebleed, uh, please hold, take the exam, note the time. If the student returns, allow them to complete the exam with the correct time remaining. So a student gets up from, for a medical reason, um, that's different than if there is an emergency, uh, excuse me, that's different um, than if we just have them get up and use the restroom. So if it's a medical emergency, the student's injured, we are able to continue the exam where they left off. If they cannot return, hold on to their booklet and make sure that we, you contact Sarah Walner at the end when there are no other students avail, uh, taking a test and uh, we'll get that situation corrected. Okay, a word about scheduling. Please review your assigned time. Let us know if you have a conflict. If you don't know what your assigned time is, we will be emailing everyone um, on the list who has, a, has, a, has volunteered to proctor, and we will let you know. If there's a conflict, let us know right away. Again, the testing site is the Alliant Energy Center, um, with the exception of late testing, which is the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of May. That will currently be um, at the Edgewood College main campus. So please make sure that you go to the Alliant Energy Center for morning exams. We'd like you to report early, earlier than the students, so we can spend some time with you answering any questions that you might have as, as we prepare for student arrival. For afternoon exams, this is between 11 and 11.30 a.m. If you can't make it uh, at those times, please let us know when you will make it, um, and then we will make sure that the student is, is ready uh, when you are. Again, parking is free at the Alina Energy Center during testing. As you enter um, off Rimrock Road, we are in the buildings to the left, You'll see um, a sign there. We are, uh, the registration table where you need to check in at is all the way to just outside of Hall D, it's in Dog. It's all the way to the left end of the, the complex. Finally, some general reminders. On our website, we have a what to bring, what not to bring document. This is for students, but it's also good just to kind of review that so you can see what they should not bring. Please remember that there is nothing on the desks, including water, during testing. Now, there are some situations in which a student has a morning exam and then shifts right over to an afternoon exam and it's running really tight. We do allow students to get some food. Uh, they can bring that into the session um, and eat that while the instructions are going on. But once you say, okay, we're going to begin the test, all food, all water should be put away on the floor under their desks along with other materials. The only exception besides exam material which should be on desks is tissue for students with allergies and uh, you'll recognize them. So we do provide tissue. Um, we can have a box for you um, set out to share with students, etc. Please make sure that you don't forget to complete a seating chart. If you're in a large group exam, uh, with several proctors, 
that situation will be taken care of. You'll be a part of that whole seating um, chart experiencing, experiencing that. Um, if you are in doing an accommodated session or you're a proctor by yourself, you will need to do that, um, set that up and complete that seating chart prior to you finishing up with the exam. Finally, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call us. Our phone numbers are here. Our emails are here. Sarah is the expert on, on all things AP. I'm uh, also here for you. I know a lot of what should go on. If there are questions, um, connect with us uh, ahead of time. Uh, I don't want you losing sleep over this. We greatly appreciate what you're doing, the time that you're giving to our students. Um, this is not uh, a, a, an incredibly difficult thing. It is challenging at times if you've never done it, uh, just because it is, uh, for the students, it's pretty high stakes. We appreciate, again, your willingness to proctor. Please don't hesitate to connect with us, and we will be here for you. So if you have any questions, let, let us know, uh, as well as uh, see you at the, the Align Energy Center. Thank you.